When we last checked in with the Book of Mormon, we zipped through a couple of tiny little chapters that tracked an uninteresting timeline of rulers completely devoid of details that were dictated while Joseph Smith desperately tried to think of something that could happen next in his book. Well, this week we're cracking open his eventual admission that no, in fact, he could not, and that would be the Book of Mosiah. Yeah, the plot of this is literally the stuff from the show about nothing that George tries to sell to NBC on Zion. It is. Like they farm, they eat, they go to work. They read. They read they, on the show, in the book. In, in fact, the only plot that really happens in the Book of Mosiah is the one in the thing they read within the Book of <laughs> Mosiah. Is. Do you leave the plates? Do you take them? I'm asking you. I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, this just wouldn't be like sex at all if my wife wasn't here being bored and making snarky comments. So, Lucinda, welcome back. Do you mean to tell me I could have gotten out of this by faking a fucking headache? God damn it. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> but you're here now and... This is like North Carolina. We started, you can't stop. So you <laughs> might as well get, a, get us going here. <laughs> ah, fuck those guys. All right, so this book is going to start us off with King Benjamin. Who's King Benjamin? I'm sorry, you didn't get the lineage from the last four chapters tattooed Rico chart style on your form? <laughs> yes. Well, it's your own fault then that you're, right? you're lost. So, isn't I mean, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Duh, it's Benjamin, son of Mosiah, whose son will be named... Messiah. <laughs> it's actually it is a handy mnemonic for that. It's uh, go fuck yourself. There, see? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before we get to the king's just endless address, we, we learned that Zarahemla was a a peaceful place throughout all the days of King Benjamin, read, nothing's going to happen in this chapter, and and that he had three sons with classic, I had to come up with two extra ones on the spot names. Uh, there's the titular Mosiah and his brothers, Holorum and Halaman. <laughs> and Burf Nerf and <laughs> la, 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 la. Okay, Joe, we're going to keep it to three sons now. Fine, just three. fine, fine. Poor Burf Nerf. <laughs> <laughs> and then Benjamin spends a couple of chapters jizzing himself over how awesome his brass plates are. Mm -hmm. Well, to be fair, without the plates, we learn everyone would dwindle in unbelief. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. true. Yeah, I was at ReasonCon. We did lots of stuff in unbelief, but uh, Dwindle was not one of them. <laughs> Towards, the end. Towards the end. Towards the end. So Benjamin grows old and realizes he's going to die soon because people come with an expiration date back then, apparently. So he brings his sons together to impart some final wisdom on them. <laughs> right, and this is where Benjamin, son of Mosiah, appoints his son, Mosiah. Go fuck yourself. Right, exactly. Good to remember. Exactly. To be king after him and gives him the plates of Nephi, the sword of Laban, and the magic compass ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, here, I got these at Comic-Con in this swag bag. Go get your brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so all the people of Zarahelma gather to hear King Benjamin's farewell address. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, what kind of animals did they sacrifice and how did they orient their tents once they arrived at the temple? <laughs> Don't worry. The book is going to spend a full eight goddamn verses cluing you in on all of that shit. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah listen, listen to this quote. And it came to pass that when, they, <laughs> that when they came up to the temple, they pitched their tents round about every man according to his family, consisting of his wife and his sons. And his daughters, and their sons, and their daughters, Wait, but, from the eldest down to the youngest, every family being separate, one from the other. Well, uh, how would otherwise? <laughs> Jesus. Down from up to oh, down. Oh, I, I to down. but separate. Separate, yeah. though. And if those sons and daughters had sons and daughters, they also can How many pages? <laughs> <laughs> and the daughters and the sons. and the, How about now? How many pages? Fuck, are you now? double indenting for block quotes? That makes <laughs> Come it on, man. better. Longer that way. Anyway, uh, next up, there's this fucking bananas moment when there's so many Nephites that he has a big tower built so they can all hear him Wait, for his, his speech. And then in the book, he's like, Is this better? And everyone's like, What? Why would this be better? <laughs> so he literally has to write everything down and hand it out to people Wait, so what? they can read it, his what? speech. Should we try to make it taller first? <laughs> no, no, let's just like give out pamphlets forever. On, on plates, tablets? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so he finally gets his speech going, which starts off with a quick reminder of how great he is. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and an awful lot of you guys never would have thought of not murdering each other without me locked into this preface here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ugh, like the beginning of our weekly meetings with Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe stop asking if you can murder people. I feel like that's on you. It's <laughs> yeah. gonna, and then he, and then he lays out the ground rules of being heaven worthy, and these rules are amazing. Yeah. Rule one is God made you. Hint for anyone looking to put together an abridged version. Rule two, follow these rules, is not a necessary addition <laughs> to these rules. <laughs> and rule three seems to be, you're all a bunch of fucking dust anyway. And if I'm not mistaken, rule four is, I'm old. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, good rule for some people here. Some of us are old. <laughs> I'll screw you, Eli. Some of us look it. <laughs> he also takes a minute here to give like a like a bad stepdad I didn't work my fingers to the bone so you can listen to your damn rock music moment where he, uh, he seems to tell them to not have slaves and to not pay taxes. Is that what he said? Mm -hmm. Right, which, spoiler alert, the Mormons are going to pay very specific attention to one of those. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Benjamin says, and gee, I hope you guys don't rebel against my son and faction off and turn black or anything. Because damn, would that be a repetitive and unoriginal place to go with this chat? <laughs> it's like a racist game of red light, green light. <laughs> and I, I, I need to point this out. The last 10 or 12 verses of this chapter are just him saying, you should do the stuff I'm presently telling you to do without ever adding any other instructions. Right? This chapter is a sign that says, read this sign. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it's like, read, keep reading. This, keep not, no, don't not keep going, sign. <laughs> <Read this sign. laughs> and I want to point out, there's one really weird moment near the end where he says, quote, I say unto you that I have caused that ye should assemble yourselves together, that I might rid my garments of your blood, end yeah. quote. And there um. is absolutely no reason in this book why that is said or what that means. <laughs> yeah, about that, why are you covered in blood for the speech man speech oh okay makes sense a blood speech <laughs> cool so Damn. now we get to chapter three the new business portion of the speech where he talks to us about things to come yeah and of course the future events he's predicting are the crucifixion of jesus and drink yeah <laughs> which which makes you wonder why he cites his source as an angel of the lord that came down to him and not Every third chapter of these plays, which we've already established that I have. Right. <laughs> Guy in the front row keeps interrupting him. And there will be a man named Jesus. Right. Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. No, I'm the ancient Mormon version of the guy who read the Game of Thrones book. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I love that his recounting of the Jesus story includes a verse for, and boy, will those Jews be sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one other little thing here. In verse 7, it says that when Jesus dies, the, the quote, blood cometh from every pore. And I feel like, I feel like we would have heard about that, right? Like somewhere <laughs> when they wrote about Jesus elsewhere. Matthew, should we keep the part where Jesus turned into a blood sprinkler? I, I, feel said, like... I said, cut that out. It's gross. All right. I'm telling Mark, Luke, and John. Dude, what did we just talk about? <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> We do establish here, though, that it's okay to die before you're too young to understand Jesus stuff. Dead babies still get into heaven. Yeah. See? See? <laughs> okay. I didn't bet, and that wasn't the point of what Andrew was saying. <laughs> 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 Don't, Don't want to know. Uh, but this boring-ass speech carries on into <laughs> chapter four, where we get further details of the Jesus story and its implications. Yeah, well, sure, because all the people got scared and cried out to him in a single voice how scared they were. Via a 51-word uh. sentence, spontaneously, <laughs> in, in unison. unison. <laughs> Just one guy who hasn't practiced. Oh, how peace and guys roar in Spanish. <laughs> this is why you come to spontaneous prayer rehearsal. Come on, guys. <laughs> Got it. This chapter has a few conflicting messages about the less fortunate, though. Because on the one hand, it says, be nice to beggars and give hungry people food. But then on the other hand, it says, if you're righteous enough, God wouldn't make you poor or hungry. So mm -hmm. the basic policy seems to be, yes, poor people are gross and deserve it, but we don't want their corpses stinking up our streets, do we? I feel like this book is really geared towards Eli's conversion. <laughs> it's not not working, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Bottomless Mormonism, coming soon. Let's do it. <laughs>
Mormonism's a lot of things. Bottomless, not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's also this obvious, and you still have my rake moment towards the end too. So up until now, the whole chapter has been vague instructions like love God and be thankful. And the closest it's gotten to concrete is take care of the poor. But then out of fucking nowhere in verse 28, he says, also, when you borrow your neighbor's shit, you should give it back, Marcus. Or else your neighbor <laughs> might sin like a motherfucker all over you. He would be it wouldn't be his fault, it'd be yours. Or certain DVDs. I said when I'm done. <laughs> you said, Why would I not? I'd gotta watch them all. And then again in one voice, the crowd explains that they believe and follow everything the king has to say up to this point and desire more clarity on how exactly to enter into a covenant with the God. Yeah. Well, yeah, because. At the beginning of the chapter, King Benjamin conducts a fucking Rasmussen poll. <laughs> <laughs> On a scale from one to ten, how happy would you say you are with the state of our salvation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we close this little nothing-ass chapter with a reminder that people who borrow other people's rakes and don't give them back and go right the fuck to hell and for all God cares because that's bullshit. Marcus, so say it the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> So everybody decides to be a Christian and King Benjamin individually carves the names of every single person in the country into plates to seal the deal. Okay. Uh, Everyone. Alan Bailman. Bailman. Oh, this is going to take forever. <laughs> I'm a J name. Can I step out of line? No. Okay. Bealman. <laughs> Bealman. And then Fuck. Mosiah takes over the, the, the kingdom while his dad gets to die. And, and he's a good king that tills the earth and shit, which is... What makes you a good king, I guess? Sure. <laughs> Earth tilling. It's like cooking with a toddler. See, I'm helping. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a great king helping. <laughs> helping. Mm -hmm. Now, and if you're thinking to yourself that now that this damn speech is over and the guy in the book it's named after is king, it will now be about the guy it's named after. Well, go fuck yourself and meet Ammon. Yeah. <laughs> And meet him, by the way, via the dumbest goddamn place name that Joseph Smith's mouth has farted up to, up to this point. The land, I shit you not, <laughs> of Lehi Nephi. Lehi <laughs> Nephi. Okay, Joe, what was the city called? Just name um, it. Lehi Nephi. I quit the religion. <laughs> <laughs> not even fucking trying, Done. man. Just like spend like 30 seconds. <laughs> Nephi, <laughs> Lephi, Nephi. Okay, Nephi, Lephi, that's good. <laughs> that's better. Right, so Messiah gets curious about what's going on up in Lehi Nephi, so he sends Ammon. Uh, he being a strong and mighty man. <laughs> what, it's in the book. It's yeah, in the it book. is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> They send him along with 15 strong men to see what's going to happen next in the book. <laughs> yeah, so they wander the wilderness for 40 days and nights to get to Lehi Nephi, where they're immediately taken prisoner by the king. Jesus. Limhi. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. And if we've learned anything from the Book of Mormon so far, these people are not good uh, sneakers. Right? You know? Not at all. <laughs> they're just like, they have no oboes all the, the time. And people notice. Also, Got to add to the stupid names thing here. Oh, His please, brothers yeah. are named Amalekai. I'm pretty sure we used that one. <laughs> Helam and Hem. Hem? Helam, Hem. Sorry, what? No, it's two different guys. <laughs> Helam and Hem. Hem. Trail off. <laughs> Second guy's name is Hem Trail off. <laughs> Right, but when Limhi figures out who they are, he throws a big party for them and tells them about all those fucking Lamanites with their damn taxes and their blackness. <laughs> He's just a Facebook <laughs> post away about Lamanite on Lamanite crime from being everyone's racist uncle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, in case you were thinking that six chapters of King Addresses His People that we already got wasn't quite enough, no worries, because now Limhi gathers his people together for another awesome uh. speech. By the way, does every goddamn speech in this thing have to start with the main bullet points of God's resume? Right. Seriously? <laughs> right. I'm also fluent in French. Oh, really? I speak French. Uh, Canadian. You didn't let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> and the speech, by the way, consists of the king saying, look, we all know why we're unhappy and suffering, so let me explain it in painstaking detail for a few pages. And again... It's because of all the taxes and the blackness. <laughs> right. <laughs> and to be fair, this was pretty harsh. They had to hand over half of their barley to the Lamanites, which is really bad since barley didn't exist in this part of the world. <laughs> 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 
Lamanites must have destroyed that too, I guess. I yeah. Not the barley. <laughs> <laughs> and also it's pretty heavily hinted that Barack Obama only got elected because he was black. <laughs> what? Getting elected is a good thing. A good thing. <laughs> like he, he got elected. <laughs> it's just like that. It yeah. is, yeah. <laughs> So the speech ends, and just when you're thinking to yourself, man, could this book use another set of plates? <sighs> we learn about the Jaredite plates. Yep. For kids. Yeah, right? <laughs> which <Plate> fresh. <laughs> which contain all the backstory for the people of Lehi and Nephi ever since Zenith led them out of Zarahemla. Well, there, there's a sentence for you. The people of <laughs> Lehi and yeah. Nephi ever since Zenith led yeah. them out of Zarahemla. Fuck you. Exactly. So, so Ammon reads those plates. But then the king tells him about yet another set of plates that his people found in some dead city, but nobody can translate them. Of course not. <laughs> Shuffling through giant golden tablets. Fuck, man. We need a like a binder and a three-hole punch that works on gold. <laughs> well, why don't we put our, our, our women in then? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, but luckily Ammon knows just the guy because the Messiah apparently has super translation powers that go with his throne. Yeah. The worst mutant mm -hmm. ever. His name is Cypher, and yes, he is terrible. Yeah, you thought you were kidding. <laughs> Wait, there's a, there's yeah. really a Yes! Yeah. And then yeah. they tried well, to I make him go. better because he learned body language to fight all the <laughs> other <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> The most sarcastically written comic ever. That's ridiculous. All right, we have to spend the rest of this chapter talking about how awesome Sears are, by the way. Because anybody who can translate plates must be swinging crazy amounts of dick. Oh, it, it literally says that people who can translate plates are even greater than prophets. Mm. Take that, Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's better than making prophecy? Reading it. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it. And now we're going to drop back three generations for a 14-chapter regression on the story of Zenith, which we will not be finishing today. No. I hope. <laughs> Wait, did the last plates end with doodly doo? Doodly doo. <laughs> <laughs> as well. Really? Or, or the French, ah, doodly doo, ah, doodly doo. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so apparently Zenith was commanded to go spy on the Lamanites, uh, found out they weren't too bad, then urged his king to make a treaty with him, but the king at that time was a prick and tried to have Zenith killed. Right, so everyone has a big civil war about whether or not we should leave black people alone. It sounds familiar, is what yes, I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> Deja vu. So, Zenif sets out to reconquer the lands of his fathers, which will become the lands of <laughs> Lehi <laughs> Nephi. <laughs> and if you're wondering what military tactics he used to reclaim that land, it was by asking the king, hey man, you mind if I put a city here? And that's it. Yeah. The king's like, sure, I'll just make everybody that already lives there leave. He, he does. Already. So, so they build a couple of cities. They plant their knees in Shium and generally minded their own business. Yeah. And uh, we get more magically disappearing wheat and barley here, by the way. <laughs> it says exciting. nothing to the knees they farm. and Shium. <laughs> they disappear farming. <laughs> but of course, they were so successful that the king of the Lamanites started having second thoughts about giving a big chunk of his kingdom to some random stranger that hated him. So he set about enslaving the people of Lehi Nephi. <laughs> oh, that's so layman. Isn't it, though? <laughs> it's like the city's name is like Sam Steve. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so effortless. So, so they armed up with God's grace and a lot of anachronistic weapons and went into battle and whipped the fuck out of them greedy Lamanites. And it came to pass that with my Glock 9 millimeter, did I vanquish them? <laughs> well, you're close, Heath, because at the start of chapter 10, Zenith tells his people to make every kind of weapon in case they ever need to fight the Lamanites again. Yeah. <laughs> we need every chicken kind. sickles, damn it. Lots of <laughs> chicken sickles. <laughs> but no zips, obviously. <laughs> Okay, one zip, because every <laughs> one, one zip, yeah. one zip. we'll do go. one. Yeah, so the Lamanites attack them again, and then the book takes a weird digression to assure us that Lamanites are definitely the bad guys, even if it seems like Nephi was being a dick earlier. I mean, he even explains that they have shaved heads and walk around in their underwear. Form, Form of, of Lamanite. Lamanite. No. Yeah. 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 Hacker. <laughs> and after verse after verse of setup for this war, it closes by saying, and yeah, we won again because we're the good guys. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Little William Wallace here. They'll never take our whiteness. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bunch of Pepe the Frogs come pouring over the hill. <laughs> 
And and then, uh, by the way, Zenith bows out of the plate carving to go die, and he hands the narrative over to his sons. So, yeah, now King Noah takes over, who is an evil, hedonistic king that spends his reign in riotous, drunken, fuck-filled Reverly. If I had to share a name with one guy in this book. Yeah, I right. <laughs> I'd go with Nephi, but it's only for the callbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he taxes all the people to pay for his harem, and his new stiff-necked fuck priests, and the whole kingdom went to shit. As they do. And the wicked king used money for multiple wives and giant palaces of gold, and oh shit, it's Salt Lake City, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's Salt Lake City. Are we keeping this? It's totally Salt Lake City. <laughs> oh, also, Joseph makes his own precious metal up here. Ziff. I, I, I'm convinced that's because he wanted to convince people that his tennis trophies were legitimate. No, this is the Ziff medal. <laughs> and they owe them a fifth of their Ziff. <laughs> is this Dr. fucking Can Zeus? Hardly believe it. <laughs> if. And the bulk of this chapter, by the way, details the wasteful infrastructure spending under Noah, since that always makes for such fascinating reading. Yeah. Yeah. Too many fucking roads, am I right? <laughs> Gotta privatize that shit. It's more efficient. <laughs> but but then the Lamanites come back, and unfortunately, the king's too drunk and mid-coitus to fight back effectively. I think we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> but they nope. eventually they eventually mount a solid defense, kick the shit out of the Lamanites, and then get all prideful. Even when Abadani shows up in the narrative to tell them to cut the shit out and give the glory to God. Ab 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 a bit and I, whatever. And, yeah. Yeah. Delightful. Another guy who's here to tell the people they're not behaving right. I love. Drink. This. Yep. <laughs> Pretty sure Lucinda's going to die of alcohol poisoning, guys. I just want to throw that <laughs> Drink. <laughs> um, and of course, with the king, here's a bit and I telling them that they're not righteous enough. Uh, he reminds people why you can't trust folks named Noah with absolute power and threatens to execute. A bit and I. I've been there on Twitter. I've yeah. like once in a while. <laughs> so uh, a bit and I sets off to disguise himself and preach the word of Moses. And just to give you a quick refresher on how stupid this book actually is, we're now reading the story of Joseph Smith translating the story of Messiah, telling the story of Ammon, reading the story of Zenith, telling the story of a <laughs> bit and I. Recounting the story of fucking Moses. <laughs> well, okay, but it's actually even worse than that, right? Because Zenith died and left the plate carving to his sons. So unless Noah is writing the story of what a miserable and misguided fuck he himself is, we have no fucking idea who's supposed to be telling the story at this point. <laughs> and if you'll allow me to summarize Abednai's prophecies, God's going to fuck you all up. Yep. All the way up. <laughs> he does this... While remaining disguised for two years, apparently. What? Yeah, like a Chinese magician. Call forward. <laughs> <laughs> Wait but eventually, for they toss him in prison, and the king's men question him about all his doomsaying and shit, uh, hoping they could trip him up and prove that he wasn't really a prophet. But alas, they fail, because how the fuck would that even work? <laughs> well, <laughs> we're still, they like, <laughs> ask him what Isaiah means, and at first he's like, Fuck you. You say you're priests. You tell me what it means. <laughs> yeah, like, so I, I'm testing you. <laughs> and they seem to be fine with that. Yeah, right? So like, yeah, he's got a point. If, if, we don't, if we don't already know, why should he tell us why he's mad? That <laughs> <laughs> so silly. So the king orders that a, a bit and I uh, be executed, but he uses his magic god powers to make himself unexecutable. Mm -hmm, like a Chinese magician. <laughs> Heath gets it. Heath gets it. Yeah, people are going to love these jokes in a couple of weeks, assuming sure. they listen to Citation Needed and then come back. Wait um, for it. <laughs> and, Three and weeks. It's, it's here that Abid and I makes a strange decision. He says, nope, I haven't told you guys all the good stuff that God told me to tell you. And until I do, God's going to make me invincible. Anyway, here's all that stuff I'm supposed to tell you. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. And now Joseph Smith makes another go at those Ten Commandments, but this time he remembered to bring a cheat sheet. Yeah. I uh, just, just need to put this seared list in the hat as well. <laughs> <laughs> second. So he recites the commandments, then bitches at the king's priest for not knowing them and not teaching all the people about pre-Jesus. Drink! Okay, seriously, guys, <laughs> some kind of intervention of some kind. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then Abidnai paraphrases Isaiah 53 for an entire 
chapter. Because you just can't have enough characters paraphrasing Isaiah 53. Yeah. And as bizarre a place as this is to cut things off, fuck it. We made it halfway <laughs> through Messiah, guys. That It's 28. We made it 14. It would make so much more sense to go another three chapters and get through the whole a bit and I story. But damn it. We read through half this stupid fucking thing. We have earned a three-week break from the Book of Mormon. So if you've wrecked with suspense over what Isaiah prophecy a bit and I will misinterpret next, you just have to wait three weeks for the next Book of Moron segment or read it for yourself, which is definitely worse. Than Don't do it. Drink. Drink.